Ladies, gentlemen, reindeer and elves, welcome along to the vlog on this Yuletide Eve. Tis the season for goodwill and gestures, after all. And what deserves a goodwill or a gesture more than, indeed, man's best friend, the pooch, the hound, the doggy, the doggo, the little shite. So today's vlog is going to centre around creating a nice little Christmas present for the puppy dogs. So we have over here a couple of thrice bowls which the poochers currently feast from on a daily basis and as anything on the floor tends to do they constantly get under my feet or particularly the water bowl seems to be a magnet for things falling off shelves hence the dint in the bottom there that was made by a jar of honey just the other day so we thought this was an issue that definitely needs address and uh, as it is the christmas season then address it we will by creating a beautiful stand for said bowls so first thing we're going to do is uh, kind of figure out a bit of a layout for these guys and I think that this orientation is kind of suitable for what we have in mind. The space that we're going to be putting these bowls is behind a door and up against a radiator of sorts so we need to make sure that it A is going to fit and then B is going to hold all the bowls. So the space I've given for this project is around 30 inches long and if you can see my handily dandle over here then uh, yeah we've got a couple couple of inches to spare and uh, well I wish I did but obviously a couple of inches to spare would be welcome in any a wife's Christmas packet and then, uh, yeah, so 30 inches on the width there. And then was going to go for about 12 inches on the depth. If I could cut it down to 11, that would be handy. 11's fine for the small bowls, but 11 inches, or about 28 centimetres, 280 mil for the large bowl. It's kind of pushing it a little bit. We'll see, I suppose, once we've done that, we're not going to really have any space to put any sills on. I think it's going to have to be 12 inches so that's the dimensions for the 2d kind of idea of it and then of course do we want these to be lifted off the ground a touch so uh, we can clean under them easier without having to move it and the dogs can get their snoots into the food so there is a train of thought that the bottom of a dog's chin when he stood in the traditional pointer stance uh, should be measured too and on our pooches it's in and around 20 inches to the bottom of Reggie's jaw and he's the smallest one at the moment and then the train of thought says you knock nine inches off that and that allows them to bend their head down and drink comfortably it's good for the digestive tract and they're in a pretty comfortable position for eating and drinking so of course that gives us 11 inches uh, 12 inches sorry no 11 inches 11 inches 20 minus 9 11 inches on the high uh, mathematics confusing me a little bit there maybe I've had a little bit too much of the uh, the old spiced wine there the mulled wine so 11 inches on the height and that's the height to the top of the bowls so we know the dimensions that we want do we want to draw a sketch out or do we just want to go for it? I think we'll do a quick sketch. So here we have the faux leather bound sketch o meter and in here we have quite a lot of past projects. So let's just scoot on up to the most recent page and we will see, there we go, that by the way was a idea for a still. I was explaining it to somebody, I wasn't going to build one. So over here, let's have a look. 
we want a doggy bowl, so I'm thinking we're kind of going to be going along the lines of 12 inches by 30 inches, about like that, with the big bowl in the middle, two smaller bowls on the outside, and then I think we're going to go with a some type of yeah thick leg on the front maybe thick leg on the front like whit on the front like that there as well so we'll have something similar on the back we'll just probably see that through there and then we're going to join I think the whole shebang together with some sills like that there we go and that'll prevent any of the uh, lateral movements back and forth movements that kind of jazz and uh, well that's all very simple isn't it at the house at the house we've got we've installed a new worktop on some cabinets and where we cut out the RR face for the sink we have got a spare bit of the solid wood countertop and I was thinking what project am I going to use that for probably something so let's save it save it I did this if it's big enough 30 inches is going to be perfect for just that let's go over to the wood pile and see if it's still in stock so here we are I'm wielding the camera with the left hand at the minute so it may seem like somebody else is shooting it for me but we'll just we found the piece of timber in question as you can see solid wood obviously made out of uh, thinner pieces of wood glued pressed baked probably and then run through a big sanding planing machine thickness there perhaps so we've definitely got enough width on there the test is going to be are we long enough and we are we're at 38 38 big ones boys and girls and uh, I think that is going to be perfect fuzzy job so let's get this thing out and we'll manhandle it over to the workbench also to keep this project in keeping with a kind of rustic vibe we ordered some angle line the other day and when it was delivered to us by our trusty courier it was taped a twixt some pieces of rough cut pine we've got one here and we've got a real long one over there six meters long so I think we can reuse repurpose recycle this piece of wood which is perfectly fine and because of the way it's been cut it's just rough sawn this will take up a little bit of wood stain very nicely indeed and hopefully it'll make the whole thing look really good and this is nice a nice dimension as well it's like a 1x4 1x3 uh, maybe so we should be able to get uh, get enough it's broad enough to use for the sills and for the legs let's have a look on there yeah th so three three inches on the width and then uh, just under an inch on the depth of a so foist things foist. Let's create a clean workspace and then commence with cutting down the top and we'll start from the top and work to the floor in that order.
not 100% sure how I'm gonna go with the legs and skirt on this. So we've got the three bowls. I think what I'm gonna do is just set the two food, food bowls just slightly back a touch so we can try and grab a little bit more space on the width and I did chop this down a little bit more to about 27 uh, to, 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 to what was it 27 inches so I think something like that and then if we bring in a substitute piece of timber for the skirtage kind of just put the skirt on like that fix it to this timber with some pocket holes maybe I think that would work you know just some pocket holes in here and then kind of uh, the legs screw on the outside of that support coming across from one side to the next and then a support this way I think it does the job I think it does the job so I'm gonna cut the skirt to go around the edge and we'll take it from there. Okay, we've just taken, ignore what I've just said, we've just taken a, sh a hard left with this design. Look at this. This is solid oak flooring, what we've got left over from the pub. I think these bits here will make far more attractive legs and skirt than will that other piece of timber so I think we're gonna punt for the oak instead good choice hardwood much more durable particularly if it's being pushed around on the floor it's less inclined to kind of splinter on the corners so we're gonna scrap the idea with that piece of pine uh, it was scrap anyway I'll save it for another project maybe some cladding of some type uh, not cladding carcassing and instead we'll run with We'll run with this, and I think we've got enough height in total. Oh, perfect, 13 inches. So we've definitely got enough height with these four offcuts for the legs. I just need tidying up, make them all the same shape, and then I've just got to run a board down to make the uh, skirt on here. Now I'm just setting up a little pocket hole jig and we're going to sort of just drill a few pocket holes into the timber. Lovely looking pocket hole. There we go, so we'll just drill another dozen or so of them in all of the wood and then we can drill this down to the base, like so. Now the pocket holes, so now I'm just going to glue and brad nail these bits together. This is at the back so I'm not worried about that little groove showing. All the stuff at the front won't have one. And then once that's glued together we can line it up, draw around it, make sure that the holes for the bowls don't foul the side and we can hit this with a sander to get these burn marks off and start to fix it all together. I've got to cut some legs as well though out of this piece of oak. So we've got the holes roughed out and I know for a fact that this is going to take me eternity to cut out with the freaking jigsaw. Oh my goodness.
Yeah, I'll see you in about five years. One hole, two holes, and then look at this. Half a hole. And the reason there's half a hole is because there's no glue on the inside of that joint, which means, guess what? Gah! She split straight down the friggin' center, but fear not. We've got a clamped, we've got a glued, and that Gorilla Glue meant to hold anything. So, we'll see. We'll see, fingers crossed this'll do the job and it'll be just as strong. And don't forget, we are gonna be reinforcing these sides with that oak skirt, so it should also have a little bit more strength given to it in that respect. Fail that, it's gonna be back to the drawing board, but it just means we need to find another top if this don't work, even though it was kind of well based around the top. For fuck's sake. I've continued with the uh, base frame, regardless of whether that sets up or not. So we've got four legs. What do you think to that? That looks fine. I'm just gonna pop some little braces in here, some little oak braces like that, and a big one across the center like that, and that will be ready to receive the top. We're just about finished. Now for the final touch. I hope this works. Oh yes! How do you like them apples, folks? There we go. Chance and Reggie. Happy Christmas, boys. Right, let's get this snuck into the car and take it home for them and see what they think. I am gonna treat it, but not quite yet. What I'm gonna do is coat it in tongue oil, which is food grade, and hopefully that'll seal it all and uh, stop this from running. We'll see. It might not. I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to coat it with the air. I think the tongue oil, because it's not a um, a solvent, shouldn't make this run because it's an oil. So fingers crossed when this ink is cured, that'll be fine. We'll put the bowls in. We'll take it back to the house and we'll see what the dogs think. But that as far as I'm concerned, is a job well done. It's in position. All we need to do is give it a day for that glue to dry. Obviously, you can't see where the crack was, but it's gone off rock solid. And then we'll oil it and see what the poochies think to it. What do you think, Reg? You don't know what it is yet.
this, boys? <laughs> 